MTD CNC, bringing you the latest engineering news via video media. So this machine, this is, is this your biggest investment from a milling perspective? Yes, Paul, yeah, it is a yeah, considerable investment for us on the milling. And it is a production machine, this horizontal machining centre from Doosan. These parts, these are typical parts that you're making, are they? These are a good spread of the volume components we manufacture on this machine, yeah. Now you mentioned about a component in the nuclear industry. Well, can, you, can you talk me through that one? Yeah, so this component is 316L, stainless steel, billeted. We manufacture these parts on the Doosan, twin pallet. In significant yeah. volumes? Batches of 220, 250, um, repeats reasonably regularly. So would you be running this machine overnight then? Would you lights out? We would run it into the night. Because we don't um, close our last shift till half past 12 at night anyway, and we start again at 6 in the morning, there's only a few hours there to run unattended. So it will run two, three hours into the night unattended. And have you ever thought about going one step more with automation? So maybe you could have this loaded, even if it was this part or something else? We, we've looked at robot loading, but for a twin pallet, really for us it's not there yet because of the volume. Um, we get the benefit of no downtime because of the twin pallet set up anyway. So. So you've got a really good spread on milling. You've got vertical machining centre, twin pallet, or not a twin pallet, but a, a fifth axis machining centre, and also then the HMC. That's correct. And we've got two twin pallet machines, three verticals, manual, and uh, a lot of milling capacity on our, on our mill turn centres as well. So Andy, you've got the Puma 2600SY as well. Are you happy with the machine? Yeah, it's uh, quite a robust bit of kit here. Um, uh, particularly for the particular job we're doing right at the moment, Joe. Uh, we're using ink and nail billets at the moment. Um, obviously the machine's got the power and the torque to be able to, to punch through it with, it with ease, obviously with the right tooling as well. We've got a, a U-drill 40mm diameter, uh, cutting at 500 RPM with a 0.1 feed and then it just chips like it was cutting through butter, to be honest. That's a good endorsement, because six to eight ink and nail, it's a challenging material. A 40mm, it's a decent size U-drill. It certainly is, Joe. It's, um, it, you do need the torque with it, tools of that size to be able to cut through. I mean, you wouldn't be able to do it on, on any of our particular other machines we've got in the factory at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it works really well for us. Um, don't know what we'd do without it, to be honest. So what other features do you like on the machine? How does the Y-axis hold up? Yeah, the Y-axis is pretty good. Uh, we do a few jobs on here now where we've got to do a bit of helical milling. Uh, to rough out some balls, uh, just to try and get rid of the swarf. But we, we do have certain materials where it's a little bit difficult to try and get rid of the swarf using the conventional boring. So heli cool milling down the bottom, having the white axis allows us to, to get rid of the swarf in a more manageable way to be able to finish the, the product off uh, to customer requirements. It's a fanic control, you've got fanic throughout the shop, is that a big point as well? Yeah, obviously every other machine we've got on here is Fanex, so it's, it's, it's better for us to keep it that way. Uh, that, that way everyone can jump on pretty much every machine and, and they pretty much know what they're doing straight away and, and you don't have to start teaching or remembering the different controls all the time. <laughs>